Hi, Coach Rory here. Did you watch last week's video about how to make winter running more enjoyable? If not, you probably haven't subscribed or turned on the notifications yet, so be sure to do that right now. Today we're going to examine the underlying causes of groin pain in runners, as well as give you some ways to diagnose, treat, and prevent this pesky injury. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. The groin is a biomechanically complex area for runners since so many different muscle and tendon groups come together in one small anatomic area. Treating and diagnosing groin pain can be tricky, especially in endurance athletes. Running related groin injuries are not especially common. They make up only 1-2% to 2 of all injuries, but they have a reputation for being difficult to get rid of. The key to fixing groin pain in runners lies in understanding the complexity of the mechanics of the groin. The pubic symphysis is the joint between the pubic bones at the front of the pelvis. It acts as the focal point for the adductor muscles of the thigh, which squeeze your legs together and help balance your pelvis during walking and running. It's also an attachment point for the rectus abdominis, a large sheet-like muscle that forms your abs. It too has an important role to play in stabilizing your pelvis during movement. Although groin injuries are relatively rare in runners, they're well researched given how often they occur in other sports like soccer. A 2007 study by Per Holmick in Denmark examined 207 athletes with long lasting overuse injuries to the groin and found that groin injuries fall into three main categories. These are injuries to the adductors, iliopsoas, and combined injuries to the rectus abdominis and the adductors. Interestingly, injuries to the rectus abdominis rarely occur in isolation. Of the 20 patients in Holmick's study with a rectus abdominis injury, 18 also had adductor injuries. Groin injuries to the adductors and to the rectus abdominis will be the main focus of today's video. The iliopsoas, though it can cause pain in the groin area, has its own distinct diagnosis and treatment patterns, so we'll cover that injury in a separate video. An easy test for an adductor injury is placing an inflatable ball or foam roller between your knees and then squeezing them together. If this maneuver produces pain, your groin pain is caused at least in part by your adductor muscles. Rectus abdominis injuries cause pain superior to the pubic symphysis in the area of your bladder or lower abdomen. Any traditional abdominal strength exercise, such as planks or crunches, will provoke pain if your groin pain involves the rectus abdominis. Remember to also check for an adductor injury, as these two usually occur in conjunction with one another. In the case of iliopsoas injuries, Pain with resisted hip flexion is a hallmark of this type of groin injury, as well as pain and tenderness along the surface of the iliopsoas muscle, which runs a bit to the outside of the pubic symphysis. Using either a partner or a solid structure to provide resistance, you can test for iliopsoas pain by lying down and attempting to lift your leg against resistance with your knee slightly bent. If this provokes pain, your injury is likely rooted in the iliopsoas. In addition to the three main groin injuries we just described, there are a handful of less common problems that can also cause groin pain while running. Make sure you rule out these causes before proceeding with the treatment plan in today's video. First, it's possible to get a stress fracture near the pubic symphysis. A stress fracture in this region will produce an aching pain while walking or even at rest and will be very tender to the touch. A bone scan, preferably an MRI, can diagnose this. Hernias, which refer to a tear in the abdominal wall, are another potential cause of groin pain. A hernia is characterized by adductor and rectus abdominis pain on the test described earlier, but will also be present with pain while coughing, sneezing, or rolling over in bed. Both inguinal and sports hernias can be incredibly painful and don't tend to heal on their own, so you should see a doctor if you think you have one. Closer examination and an MRI might be required to diagnose a hernia, and since it's caused by a tear in the abdominal wall, surgery is often needed to correct it. Finally, labral tears are another rare but noteworthy cause of groin pain in runners. The labrum is a gasket-like ring of cartilage that surrounds your hip joint, and when it's torn, often by a misshapen femur head or hip socket, it causes groin and hip pain. Labral tears often cause a mechanical catching sensation in the hip. As a result, hip flexion, adduction, and internal rotation can reliably reproduce pain. Imaging the labrum will require a special kind of MRI called an MR arthrogram. 
All right, if you've gotten this far into the video, I have good news and bad news for you. The bad news is that your groin pain is probably a result of adductor and or rectus abdominis dysfunction. The good news is that we have a comprehensive rehab program that has proven successful for countless athletes. The program was developed by Per Homick, author of the same diagnostic paper we looked at earlier, along with several colleagues throughout Denmark. Their 1999 paper describes how researchers took a sample of 68 athletes with long-standing groin pain caused by adductor dysfunction and split them into two groups. The first group underwent standard physical therapy, which included laser treatment, stretching, and massage. The second group underwent a rigorous active physical training routine. The treatment plan lasted 8 to 12 weeks. At the study's conclusion, 23 of the 29 patients in the active physical training group had returned to their previous level of sport, compared to only 4 of 30 in the physical therapy group. With such impressive results, Homic's program is definitely worth a try. This strength program is comprised of two phases. The first one lasts for two weeks, while the second lasts 6 to 10 weeks, depending on how recovery progresses. Your arms should be lifted so that they're above your head. Try to keep your legs straight and bring them up so that they're at roughly a 45 degree angle to the floor. At the same time, bring your arms up and over your head so that they're parallel to your legs. Keeping your arms and legs as straight as possible, slowly lower your body to the floor. Lie on your stomach and straighten your legs behind you. Position your arms so that you're supporting the back of your head. Keep your neck relaxed and in line with your spine. Then slowly lift your upper back, pressing your hips into the floor. Engaging your core and glutes, hold for several seconds before lowering yourself to the starting position. For an added challenge, you can perform the Superman variation of this exercise. Standing with your legs hip width apart, place your foot in the resistance band that is attached to a secure object. Then slowly pull the foot attached to the band inwards until it's touching your other foot. Return to the starting position and repeat until you've completed 5 sets of 10 repetitions. This time you can get more nuanced with your foot placement. In addition to balancing on one or two legs, you can position your feet so that they're parallel and perpendicular. 
We should point out that there are a few downsides to this rehab strength routine. First, it takes a lot of time. As of yet, there are no follow-up studies to demonstrate whether an abbreviated version will provide similar results, so the safe bet is to do the full program. Second, special equipment like a balance board and slide board may be needed. If you're a gym member, check to see if this equipment is available before going out and purchasing them. And third, it should be noted that this routine explicitly forbids stretching the adductor muscles. The authors of the study hypothesize that stretching might actually perpetuate the injury by preventing healing, so it's best not to stretch your groin injury until you're sure it's fully healed. Although there's less research to back their effectiveness with regards to groin injuries, many runners have reported success through the Graston technique, ART, and rolling the groin area with a medicine ball or lacrosse ball. Emerging treatments such as PRP and shockwave therapy haven't been studied in groin injuries, so it's hard to say if you'll get much benefit from them. If you don't see any results with the routine we've provided, seek a second opinion from a medical professional. Surgery may be a last resort option for chronic groin pain. The program designed by Holmick and his colleagues strongly discourage running during the first six weeks of treatment. After that, easy jogging is allowed on a level surface as long as it doesn't cause pain. From there, you should proceed by increasing your mileage cautiously, backing off or incorporating cross-training if symptoms return. Which symptoms are you currently experiencing? Are you going to try the routine outlined in today's video? Have you had success with other treatments not mentioned in this video? We wish you the speediest of recoveries, and until next time, have a great run today.